Hi, I'm Carmen Alana Tibbetts in the Agoja Art Studio, and today I am joined by this handsome little skunk wearing a crochet jacket. And we're going to take a break from talking about sewing costumes, and I'm going to give you some tips about sewing with knits and also uh, how to crochet and knit your own little coats and jackets like this one. So let's get started. I'll begin by talking about something that probably more of you will try first before you make clothes yourself out of something you crochet or knit yourself, and that's using recycled uh, crochet or wool clothing that you would find in a thrift store or maybe something old that you have yourself. And if you've watched my other videos, you know that I use a lot of felted wools. And so I'll get sweaters, throw them into a washing machine, and felt them down. And that's what this jacket is on this rabbit. And in a case like this, I don't line it. So other costume components will be lined, like this one is here, and I've shown that in other videos. But when I'm using sweaters, I don't line it because everything has been felted and it's very stable even along the edges. Usually I don't like to have plain edges, so in this case I've just stitched some beads along the edge by hand, you know, just a needle and thread. And the benefit of using felts is that those stitches will sink in and you won't be able to see them from the front or the back. So if you're going to use um, old clothing, wool or cashmere or angle or anything like that, felt it first. And you do want to be mindful of the weight of the fabric. So here is a little bit of that uh, cashmere blend that I showed you in that particular rabbit. And even though it's felted and a little bit denser than it was before, it's still very lightweight and it's still very flexible. And that's the key when we're talking about knitted and crocheted garments, is that there is that stretch and that flexibility, and so you can still fit these garments around the body fairly well. Ribbing is very nice to use because even though it's felted, it still has a lot of stretch. And here I've cut it off of the sweater and you can see that the edges um, you know, this is the, the sweater edge and this is the raw edge. It's still very stable and it looks really nice and it has a lot of drapeability and so it's a very beautiful fabric to use. If you're using a sweater that was more like a winter sweater, it's going to be felt down thicker and it's going to be less flexible and so something like this I would use as a coat instead of like a lighter jacket or a sweater because it's just not going to have that drape. And again, you know, you can cut it out and do whatever you want. You don't have to line it, which is really nice. So you can cut it out exactly as you're going to use it. So if you're going to do that, you can use your clothing patterns or often what I do with knits is I have a very basic, very blocky pattern that I use because then I will sometimes crochet or do beadwork on the edges to give it a little more, well, I don't know, it looks a little bit more finished but also I can make some curves that way and I find for me it's a little bit easier to do. Now if I'm going to crochet or knit a garment my choice is almost always crochet, and there are a couple reasons for that. I think it's faster. Um, I'm a very fast crocheter, and so you can see here a little coat that I crocheted for this skunk, and it's using this basic blocky pattern here. And I crochet it all in one piece like this, and then it would be stitched up at the top of the shoulders, and then if I'm going to embellish it, in this case I did some crochet uh, rick rack, and that's what made the stripes for um, the skunk here, it's his little skunky pattern, um, then I would just stitch that on with the, the wool yarn as it is. So what kind of yarn to use for this? Well, you can use anything that you like. However, you want to use the lightest weight yarn that you feel comfortable using. And this is actually um, Cascade. And I use a fingering weight as my sort of go-to weight. And I make a lot of, oh, let's see, I got this all tangled here. I make a lot of scarves and shawls and things like that. And I like this, it's a wool yarn because it still will crochet up relatively thin and flexible. It comes in lots of colors and it's inexpensive. So here 
I've got a little um, a little shawl piece that I'm making up and you can see here you know I'm, let's see I think this hook is an F and so it's still pretty flexible lightweight and has good drapeability and I like doing crochet because you know as you're working it you can see exactly how big it is and where you need to change it and you can just drape it right on the animal itself which is nice you can't really do that with knitting and I just think knitting takes longer of course for you it might be different but you know whatever works for you uh, my go-to is crochet and so if you're gonna do that it is essential that you test your yarn or the yarns that you're thinking of doing so as an example I show you this little coat here that uh, I'm working on for a lizard and this is a scaly pattern sometimes I've seen it called dragon scale and I tested this particular pattern out with a variety of different threads in this case um, to see what they're going to look like and I had to go relatively small to make it look good and correct for the size of doll that I'm making. So if you were going to do this pattern in uh, a yarn like to make a sweater, this is the size of the scales and obviously this is not going to work on a doll. Well, for you it might, I mean depending on what you want to do, but for me it just wouldn't be right. Um, so I tried all these different threads and in the end the one that I liked the most was this which is a crochet cotton and it's a very tiny hook that's true and uh, it took a while to do but the benefit is that I have a nice scaly pattern and then you know, I'm going to dye this to get all of the colors that I want and then I'll stitch it up at the shoulders and it will be complete so you can do whatever you want just be mindful of the sizes of the yarn that you're going to try out and usually you're going to have to go smaller that you, than you want and you can use a very simple pattern something like this but what if all you want to do is just make some trims for the edge well in cases like that it's still important to try different things so here I have some samples of uh, different trims using different kinds of threads and even different sized beads. So here this is the same size thread but two different sizes of beads and I would not use either one of these for a doll. I would think it would be kind of big and even this I think is a little bit chunky. So you know it's up to you what you're going to do but the key thing is to test 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 because you don't want to end up with something like this well maybe you do but <laughs> I wouldn't think that you would so give it a try uh, just remember that you can go simple and that you have to use uh, an appropriate weight of yarn for your particular project so hope you have fun with that Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.